Welcome back to The Feminist Frame. Today we're talking about Avengers Endgame. It's the 22nd film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and serves as a sort of closing arc for some of our favorite characters. The film's directed by the Russo brothers and features the ensemble cast we've all grown to love from previous Avengers flicks and their own solo series. So after 10 years of building up to this movie, did it deliver? I think so, but here to talk about that with me um, are my co-hosts, Aubrey, and our friend Zeke. Hello. What's up? So, uh, to start things off, um, I kind of want to get everybody's initial takes. Um, Z, you've seen all films in the MCU, is that correct? Uh, yes, I have. And Aubrey, you've seen... Mm, hit and miss some, yeah. some of the better ones. <laughs> and some not so good ones. <laughs> All right, so so, and I've um, seen them all as well, probably in numerous times. Um, so that's kind of kind of where we're sitting. So, like, what did you guys think um, coming into the end game with you know, like, what what you had in your arsenal of um, prior knowledge to the the heroes in the universe? Um, Z, what about you? Uh, I thought it was true to them, like from what I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like how they made. They gave, like, all the characters a little spotlight. Yeah, for Everyone sure. had their own little moment. So do you think it, it successfully delivered on the uh, the promise it made? Yeah. Yeah? I was entertained. I liked it. Good. Aubrey, what were you, what's your initial Um, thoughts? I thought it was good. I I liked it. I, I liked that, you know, since it was, like, the last Avengers movie, supposedly, like, mm-hmm. they got back to kind of their core group mm-hmm. and got to showcase them a little bit more. Yeah. Um, rather than trying to balance, like, everybody in any MCU universe, kind of what they did more in Infinity Wars. Um, it was very satisfying ending. Uh, we should say this isn't all spoilers podcast all the time, so don't be listening to this yeah. if you haven't seen it. All spoilers. Um, you know, and it started off really dark, mm-hmm. I thought, which was interesting for, you know... For comic. a Disney movie? <laughs> well, yeah, for a comic movie. It was pretty dark at the beginning. Um, overall, I think I liked Infinity Wars better, actually. Wow, okay. Except for the last, like, 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, time travel, we're going to talk about it, I know. <laughs> but it's really hard to pull off, and almost no one does it well. Mm-hmm. And that took me out of it a little bit but um overall i thought it was really good i'm actually kind of surprised to hear you say that like i i as you know i saw it um on thursday whenever it came out and i knew i was going that weekend to see it with you guys and i was just like oh man aubrey's not gonna like this because i i was just like it was it felt like um three hours of like fan service to me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, also I, I did really love it, but... I hate that movies are three hours now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I can just say that. In general. Incredibly long just, to sit Or, there. like, make an intermission. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Just a little, little you break. You know the people have to pee. Like, just make an intermission. Think about how much money those concession stands... I'm sure oh, yeah. the movie theaters would love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, it I, I really... If they're going to keep making movies <laughs> this long, that should be a thing. <laughs> Doesn't really have to do with the ventures, but kind of does because you're always going to miss something, and then you're trying to figure out like when's the most opportune movement to leave. Because I actually almost left during the scene with Black Widow, and I'm really glad I didn't because I would have missed something huge. Mm -hmm. But I was like kind of weighing like, is uh, this seems kind of slow? Should I get up? And I waited five seconds, and then was like, nope. (laughs) It's it was really unfortunate because I was uh, like, all right there's, like, apps and stuff that'll tell you, like, when's a good time to step out for... Oh, really? To to I have not seen that. Yeah, but... and I was, like... And I was trying to find that and look look around to see if there's any articles, and they were all, like, never. Never's a good time to leave the theater. <laughs> and I was just, like, oh, you can't say that when it's three hours long. And I can absolutely tell you when some good times to PR whenever Ant-Man's just wandering around figuring out that he's right. been gone for... Five years, that would be an excellent time to get out of the theater and go to the bathroom. So, yeah, just absolutely. Four. I mean, it was just mm-hmm. comedy, so you could have yeah, like yeah. finding four. Cut yeah. in New Asgard, absolutely. Good time for a bathroom break. Now that we've got that out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I kind of wanted to discuss the plot in general, like um, specifically. Um, well, I guess before we get to, to time travel, um, we start off almost... You know, relatively soon after everybody, you know, poof, gone. Um, uh, 
Tony Stark's up there flying around and Captain America somehow finds them and brings them back. Captain Marvel. I think our Captain Marvel, <laughs> yeah. I um, imagine Captain America <laughs> flying, flying through, through space. space. Yeah. America. You've learned some new skills, Captain America. It was super um, convenient that she just happened to be in that part of the universe. Well, like, and I was just like, I guess... Space is one lane. And this I is, I guess, one of the reasons why I was like, I don't know if like people that like aren't like crazy fans that have watched every movie and every like end credit scene or something are going to like it as well because they didn't explain some of the things. And I feel like you're left to fill in the blanks there. Like Captain Marvel, like just shows up out of nowhere. Like, well, we saw in an end credit scene to, um, the to Captain Marvel that she shows up back at like home base at the right, Stark Tower. That Nick Fury calls her. Mm-hmm. And she she meets, you know, Captain America and, oh, and Black right. Widow. And, like, so, like, maybe they told her at that time Stark's missing in space somewhere. And but she's that's like, the part, though. Somewhere, yeah, like, yeah. somewhere in space. Somewhere in space. Well, she's like, 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 how fast she well, can fly. I'm sure, you know, she's just like, yeah, I'll take a... Well, if Unless, she knows where they're at, there's a start. Yeah, point. On, um, yeah, we we went to wherever Thanos and mm-hmm. uh, Tony had that battle at. Right. Yeah. But but did they know that planet's name? Their best system's name? You know. I don't so, know. I don't it doesn't know. matter. But she found it. She yeah. Found it. <laughs> well, whatever. It was they the got first, him. <laughs> you know, a few minutes. Um, but I do. So that's. Whenever they finally all come together and, you know, Captain Marvel's all like, well, you didn't have me before, so let's let's get out there and do it. So they make their first run into space, try to get back to Thanos, which you can see, like, the, the damage that he's done to himself, trying to, like, wield yeah. the power of all of the Infinity Stones. Um, so so yeah. that scene, I thought, was uh, kind of a bold move because, well... Remember that he got that damage because he destroyed the Infinity Stones. Right. So, right. But, but it was like using it. Like, I guess he used it like once during that snap and then he had to use them all again to yeah. destroy it. And he looked really... The thing that I liked about that scene is that like how kind of defeated he was uh-huh. by his own actions and like without sort of a drive, a master plan, he didn't really have anything left. Like his purpose is well, yeah. done. He said that was like his plan like in the... Uh, what was it? In, Infinity Wars with uh, Gamora, like when she was a kid, mm-hmm. he was like, I'm just going to retire. So, so Yeah, you know, which he kind of had done, but he didn't so. look like happy or very satisfied. You know, well, I just... Who's happy in retirement? Nobody's actually happy there. I mean, like, if you're doing something fun, yeah, but I mean, like, if you're just like, yeah, I did this forever, man, going across the galaxies, <laughs> killing people, it's all yeah. done. Um, I I did love that they went for the uh, headshot though. After oh. that, after they find out that the uh, stones are no more, like Thor's just kind of like fuck it, like yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna kill him. Then. Gonna that. Him. <laughs> I was like just like you know it's it's Disney and it's superheroes and it's just like I can't believe that they just beheaded this guy yeah. like so quickly into this movie. And like after him and his uh, what's her name, his daughter, his other daughter. She's Nebula? Like, oh, yeah, she's like, my father doesn't lie. He's like, mm-hmm. thank you, daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, man, fuck Appreciate you. that. Well, yeah. here goes your head. Uh, I do have to say, as <laughs> it's just so Josh Brolin. <laughs> There's mm-hmm. really no way to separate him. So, thank you, daughter. <laughs> it's just the voice where I'm like, oh, you're so Josh Brolin. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, usually whenever you put so much, like, Makeup and digitally alter some of these characters. It's, it's hard to find them under there. Oh, but his Not voice. Like you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> yeah. how like a Johnny Depp character is always going to be a Johnny Depp character. Yeah. Like Josh Brolin characters are always <laughs> have a lot of Josh Brolin in them. <laughs> um, yeah, though I I do kind of like with like how these movies play with time, mm-hmm. right? Sort of like starting you at the end mm-hmm. of our previous story. Like I, I think it's clever. Like where they start and stop their movies mm-hmm. that are not a lot of other, you know, sequels would do. Uh-huh. To, like, kind of start at the end where you have that unfinished business with Thanos. And then, like, he murders them, and then you're like, wait, this is this is the first ten minutes of this? What are we doing now? Right, yeah. Who's <laughs> <laughs> um, the I, I honestly, I love the, the jump, like, and here's where I think it gets, starts getting, like, really dark, right? You see... 
yeah. five years ago by and you see how it's affected everybody, like Black Widow's struggling to hold on to this like um, global and s- sort of universal uh, network. Well, she, um, and she's running stuff, she's, too. She's new, she's new Fury. She's Black Fury. And she's Black she Widow just Fury. looks exhausted and, you know, tired. <laughs> like, um, the years have taken a toll and she's just trying, like... You you just feel her like struggling to keep it all together. Yeah. Um, Cap has his oh, which actually I wanted to talk about. Cap has his uh, support group for like vets. Um, that was for cute. everybody, you know, like and handling the um, snap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, you see, uh, one of the directors is the um, uh, Joe Russo. Is it Joe? Um, he he, was, he, he was a cameo in the that scene. He was the openly. The first actually openly gay Marvel character in any Marvel movies. Um, but he was the the man that was sitting there saying he went on a date. You know, they cried over salad or something like that. Um, so that was that was uh, the director's little cameo in there. Um, um, have either of you guys watched The Leftovers? No. Like, uh, it's an HBO show that I wanted to like but didn't. Mm-hmm. But the, the concept is that, like... A bunch of people just disappear randomly, mm, like um, rapture, and no one like. knows what happened. And it's kind of this big. Sp- I didn't watch that much of it because I wanted to like it, and I just didn't. Yeah, but it borrowed a little bit from that. Actually, mm. that kind of whole concept and how they're dealing with it. Ah, oh. like it's like an AA grief, like you know, like, mm-hmm. or like grieving. I mean, don't, don't they have grieving? Grieving groups, right? Yeah, it, it, that's kind of was like yeah. a therapy support group. Yeah, um, I, I did like that part. I thought it was kind of cute. The, yeah, the date, for sure. Like, <laughs> it was dark, but then like, oh, but we're going on a second date. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of. So we're all in this boat and trying to on. move on, yeah. Because it was like, yes, yeah, five years? Or is it mm-hmm. ten years later? Five years. Yep. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of things happen, but it's like, because uh, uh, I know we talked about this with, uh, well, with Spider-Man coming back, but I'm like, he's in a new movie, like, you know, he's back in high school or college but it's like his friend is too so it's like did he go too like this whole half of a world right. life so you don't know who's gone so Which, if he lost like his whole family he'd be like the only one you know mm-hmm. like a dude went on a date so yeah like who knows cause yeah. cause the yeah. half cause Thanos said he's taking half of everybody right yeah. right and it's just like it's not like you know half from this household yeah. it's half just literally half humans. so like mm-hmm. where they're pulled from is sort of like Random. arbitrary um, so, so yeah, like a whole school here could be taken out, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so we're not really sure, you know, how evenly the snap gets through, through places, but, um, yeah, just still 50% of the universe is a lot of fucking people in life. So, so yeah, I think that, um, you start talking about the, um, time travel and whenever, you know, Spider-Man comes back. So I think that's yeah. a... It's a good place to maybe start talking about um, how they approach time travel in this movie um, and how maybe it's different from other ones and whether we think it worked or it didn't. So they do travel okay. back in time um, after, so Ant-Man comes back and starts sharing with them how they can do this time travel stuff. Time um, heist. But time the time heist. heist. Um, Got steel time. And so they, in one of their um, iterations where they go back in time, they're at the um, battle for New York that from the first Avengers movie. Um, and then you, you find out the sorcerers were, were all involved protecting their building. Yeah, with Tom um, Stone. Uh, what's her, the actor's name? Yeah, the um, uh, Tilda Swinton yeah. is yeah. the like sorcerer the bald, supreme at that time. Bald mage or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, and so she's the one that's talking to um, the Hulk there and kind of explains how the timelines work. So if they're, they start messing with things in the past, it'll create a new timeline essentially and not affect the their current, yeah. their, their timeline. Like what happens in their future doesn't change. It just sort of spurs off another But they didn't timeline. know that when they started. So I did think no, that like... No, they talked about it. Well, the Tony whole. Stark's like willingness, because at first he's like, hell no, I have a daughter now and I can't risk her right. not existing, which mm-hmm. is a very legitimate yeah. <laughs> right. concern yeah. for messing with time. But then he's like, nope, never mind, I figured it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. But no, like, I think because... Uh, Hard turn. They said, uh, 
was it the Back to the Future time stuff? He's like, oh, but that's, that's not real. Because he's like, 